Hello again ladies and gentlemen, Saka here and welcome back to another episode of American Truck Simulator and we just have a few cities to go to visit in Washington. This little guy right here that looks like something out of the military, we are hauling it to Kennewick. Today, looking at our world map and our route, it's the lift truck chassis. We'll be going up the 5 over to the 405, down to the 90, down the 82, and passing through Yakima and ending up at the rail yard of Kennewick. And that will leave just, uh, what, one? One city left, Longview, and by all intents and purposes, we should have seen it already. We drove right by it on the five. So I don't know if we want to do a mission specific to Longview. We'll have to see exactly what goes in and out of Longview. But at least we have a job today. 263 miles, about a five hour job, according to our GPS. So let's make do, make haste, and this thing is pretty long, so it's a bit longer uh, than what we normally are used to it, but it does uh, have that double articulation uh, right there in the middle, and I mean, this thing is uh, quite bulky, let's put it that way. So we'll be on our best behavior and as wide a turn as we possibly can muster uh, because this thing is pretty honking big, let's put it that way. And we bump the UPS truck, but no worries. I don't think any damage to the trailer. And this is going to be interesting to get out of here for sure. Let's go about as straight as possible and then cut it once we are clear. Unfortunately, this is a, Turn right. a bit of a handful. Let's get past the halfway point. And it's very awkward turning. You better stop, car, because we need all the road to get out of here. There we go. Nice and easy, and away we go. So, not only do we have an interesting road to get to Kennewick, but we have an interesting load uh, to take it there. It, is, it does stick out on the sides just a bit, so we have to be extremely mindful as we cruise along. And I mean, we're basically on city streets right now. I'll feel better once we get on the five. Turn right. Let's make sure we don't clip this telephone pole. We do have the suicide lane that we can use to make the turn with, so we shall do such things as these. Keep right, and then. And the immediate right. right turn on five. All right, turn feeling right. pretty good in the neighborhood. All right, down pit road we go. Let's get this thing back up to speed. 60 miles an hour and our Volvo should not have any problems doing such things as these. We took a rest in Tacoma. In Olympia, there was only one spot to rest and it was a garage and I didn't feel like buying the garage since we have one in Seattle already. So it really didn't make much sense unless we were just so strapped for cash that we wanted to just you got to be kidding me. I just got up to speed. Well, I mean, we're going to be heavy, guys. I don't know what you're expecting from us, but we are heavy indeed. All right, let's get her woed up. Finding a new route. Well, you don't have to look too hard. If you fail at finding a new route, you're fired. I'm going to get someone else. Can we even fit through here, man? Like, this is going to be a tight squeeze. Oh, nice and straight. Tell you what, 138,775 pounds. Luckily, we have a full fuel tank. We also took the liberty of filling up while we were in Tacoma. So no need to worry about our fuel situation because we're going to be burning a lot of fuel pulling this thing. That is for sure. And then we get off of the five just right up here. No time to relax. I'd like to settle in. But luckily, we don't have to worry about crossing over um, traffic. You know, we just stick in this lane because we're exiting right now Bellevue and the SeaTac Airport. And uh, we discovered in the last episode that SeaTac Airport is uh, not available. Or at least from the way that I went, we couldn't see the SeaTac Airport. So getting on the 405 here, sounds like we're in California, but nope, Highway 405 it is. 
And if we can get up to 60, that would be ideal. Let's go to Top Gear, set our crews, and let our truck get up to speed. So now that we're on the open road, I can thank you so much for joining me again on this episode of American Truck Sim. And only a few more episodes to go. If uh, SCS wants me to continue making American Truck content, uh, release Utah, please. Um, I'm looking forward to Utah. I don't know how much content is going to be there, but as I'd said in videos before, I think their pipeline is going to grow. It's going to speed up. Uh, cause, do we have our lights on? Yeah, we don't need our lights on. Cause, you know, the states are going to get smaller and the team I think is getting bigger. I think SCS has hired some new talent, uh, to come in, which of course, the more people you have working on a project, the faster it can theoretically go, unless you have a conflict of creative vision, which, uh, if you're developing a game by yourself, you are the sole, um, sole provider of that creative vision. You can do whatever you want to do. All right, east to Spokane, we shall. And you know, it's really easy to make the decision. Uh, you don't have to go through anybody. But as SCS grows and you have uh, different people making the maps, you know, you want the, the game to feel cohesive, that it was made um, by the same people. So you don't want anyone radically changing the way you do business which I'm sure their, uh, their vetting technique should be pretty solid. And I couldn't imagine what that process would be for uh, game developers who are bringing on, say, freelancers or, you know, even their own new hires, um, modelers and whatnot. Like, you got to take a look at their portfolio and their style because if you have a certain style that you want to set for your game and... You know, you bring in someone else, like if you are a realistic Leonardo da Vinci painter and you hire Pablo Picasso to come in and help you paint, all of a sudden your Mona Lisa is going to have eyes turn 90 degrees and her mouth is going to be sticking out to the side and her hair is going to be spaghetti and, you know, it's like, wait, this was not the cohesive vision that I had in mind. And as game developers, you know, the game director has to really cinch that down and make it clear what their vision is. But this is a nice vision. I will say that. Take a look at what we've got here. It's one thing about the United States. It is so big and so diverse that you can see any real type of uh, natural occurrence that you want. Except maybe active volcanoes. I mean, you can count Yellowstone or what have you, the old reliable geyser, <laughs> old faithful, um, but it's not an, I don't know if you would consider that an active volcano. I know it's a super volcano and if it, if it decided to blow its top, it would pr pretty much decimate weather patterns and it'd be like a freaking meteor hit in the United States. So let's hope for not, for that to not happen. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to put out content. I'd be too worried about dying and ain't nobody got time for that. So yeah, the, uh, the road to Kennewick looked interesting. Hopefully it's a uh, highway most of the way. I can handle two lane roads because uh, this trailer doesn't uh, play nicely on narrow roads, I don't imagine. A way station, we better have the right of way. Like we better be able to just drive right on by because we've passed an inspection already. We, we should have our sticker in our window that says we're good. All right. Yep, way station. Although I don't... Oh, I see. It's across... Nope, there it is. Y'all better tell me to have a safe journey. Because I ain't about to pull in. Come on. Fingers crossed. Yes. That is what I'm talking about. Thank you guys so much. Because getting this thing woed down from 60 miles an hour down to 15 is a little inconvenient. And it's not like we're crossing state lines or anything like that. So we don't have to worry about such things as these. But something I do have to worry about, once American Truck has uh, gone the wayside for the Washington DLC, what comes on Monday? And uh, 
I was thinking, you know, there's still plenty of D&D for absolute beginners that I could record and put on Monday, sort of speed the, the process up a bit, because at one video a week, it's going to take a while to go over the basics of Dungeons and Dragons. So if I can do that twice a week, that would be pretty cool. Ellensburg and Wenatchee, so not Kennewick. But it's the uh, ever ongoing struggle of trying to come up with ideas. But one thing that did work out really well, and I'm not sure if you saw, but my uh, Kerbal Space Program 2 analytical video where I looked at the trailer and discussed my own thoughts and broke down the trailer a bit. It uh, did really well and that was thanks to Google searches so I looked at my analytics and said how come you know my videos on average get seen you know within the first week maybe 10 views for the first week and then views slowly trickle in from there so why in 24 hours did I get 250 and it was all Google search, man. It was all like people typing in trailer reaction or trailer breakdown into Google and bringing up my video. So it wasn't even like it was recommended to anybody. And that's one thing that I'm gonna have to uh, bring up to my tutor when I uh, speak with him here. Is this us? Yeah, I think it's us. Is it two lane? Yes, it is two lane. Let's see if we can pass him. No, we're going to have to keep left, I think. Like what? Oh, that's the overpass. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But I'll have to uh, discuss search trends and see, you know, how to push getting recommended. I had a good few words of encouragement uh, this week ever since then. A lot of people I haven't seen on the channel before said, you deserve a lot more subs. And it's like, yes, I do. I don't mean to sound conceited, but I put a lot of time and effort into this. And I, I think I'm, you know, decent enough at it to garner a bit of a following. And yet, you know, there are channels that really don't do a whole lot that grow much bigger than me, I guess, because they do get recommended. And YouTube recommendations are a funny, funny thing, man. Just like this bridge can't really tell how it works, but it does. But yeah, just trying to come up with something that might be appealing to the general masses is an ongoing struggle. And I don't want to be a channel that just reacts. Like a reaction channel seems like, unless you are like really good at reacting, it seems like it's sort of an afterthought. Like for example, um, there's a channel that I uh, got recommended, and he's a history teacher. And he reacts to epic rap battles of history and like extra credits and history simplified and just basically talking about, you know, a little bit more in detail about the events that occurred. And it's like taking what you know, for sure. I mean, if you go to college for four or five years and you study history, you better know your history. and big things that come up in these series like I'm sure you would have an opinion or you know diving deeper but it's you know you watch a video you record and you're done for gameplay purposes especially Kerbal like this motorsport manager uh, D&D &D, well I wouldn't say D&D &D so much but NASCAR you hop in you record your session and you're done there is no like outside prep work you just have to think what am I doing today and off you go series like Kerbal for a 20 minute episode I have about three and a half hours on average of footage to break down into those 20 minutes because it's a lot of trial and error and you know going back to the drawing board and trying it out and if it fails not even in a funny way it's like well that's not good enough I'm not putting that out there so let me try it again and if you're doing a uh, long distance mission like I'm planning to do to ha do a um, Kerbal mission to Duna where you're actually landing on the surface and collecting surface samples and then getting the Kerbals and that lander back it is an involved process just waiting for the windows to open space 
it takes time and if you want to play it well that's how you have to do I mean I could go the lazy route and put together something I know that isn't going to work and strap 300 boosters on it and say yeah here we go this is funny ha ha kaboom oh, lol raffle copter alright see you next episode it's like what what's the point of that so I don't want to do stuff like that there are people who are great at it and you know they they garner a big following but you know it's not my style and one thing that I don't want to do is you know do something that's out of my wheelhouse that is isn't even in my style like reactions or things like that I don't know it's, it's different horses for different courses that is for sure YouTube has a tremendous vast expanse of people doing different things so it all comes down to what sets me apart what I do well what I don't do well and then hopefully YouTube helping me out a bit and recommending my videos and not putting my videos on a you know a video of a turtle getting a bath like what person thank you thank you what person who watches animals getting clean would take a look at American truck and say yes this is relevant to my interests now when Planet Zoo comes out which I do plan on playing and I'm extremely excited about yeah I could see that I could see the YouTube algorithm saying hey if you like animals and you like watching videos about turtles here's a video about a zoo I could see that but the correlation of watching a turtle Keep take a bath and watching and a exit rocket exit. launch uh, in Kerbal Space Program or a NASCAR race, I don't see how the two come together. Good old AI. All right, exit 102. This looks a bit sharp. Let's try not to flip over, shall we? Luckily, the load looks to have a low center of gravity, so it's not like a top-heavy monstrosity that we have to worry about really tipping over. So as long as we don't short the corner, We'll be fine. And just 39 minutes to go. One city left after this in the Washington DLC. And I've enjoyed it seeing Washington again, albeit from a gaming standpoint and not, you know, actually in person in real life. But there are definitely some places that I recognize right off the bat. And that speaks volumes to what the guys at SCS do on the reg. All right, Kennewick and Pendleton. With only 28 miles to go, let's take a look at our exit. Hopefully we get counted for Kennewick. I would hate to make all of this journey and not get the city counted. If it doesn't count when I drop off, I'm definitely driving around and getting it so it does count. I am not just gonna let sleeping dogs lie and say, well, we missed Kennewick. No, 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 we didn't miss Kennewick. Although Kennewick looked Keep to be right. only a few roads, so right. I don't believe we are going to miss it. All right, exit here. And we exit got an actual right. clover leaf up ahead of us. Unfortunately, we won't be taking it. We're going right on around. And we can see our destination. I believe that is the rail yard there. And dang, all these drivers bringing in the money. Yeah, before I end each, uh, rec well, I end the recording session. There we go, 15 of 16. One city left. But before I shut the game off, when I Keep am left. done recording, and I go through all my left. drivers and make sure that they are leveling up the things that make the most sense, for sure. And with all these drivers, that becomes a chore in itself. Turn left. To make sure they get their long distance, then they get their uh, special qualifications. And then they get their high value cargo, then they're fragile, then they're just in time. I leave fuel for last because I don't believe I lose too much money in fuel costs. So I can I tend to keep that last. Alright, two minutes. Hopefully it's a straight pull in because we have this massive honking trailer. Hopefully we can get through the main gate. And I don't believe a train is coming. So we can try to squeeze in here, but it is a bit 
of a squeeze. Yeah, let's cut it this way. We're good. Oh, come on now. We are hung up. Yeah, that's what I thought. Bud, 5609. I'm gonna tell you what, buddy. We are closer to Canada than usual. All right, let's cut her. And pull as straight as possible under this loading crane. Hopefully we straighten out by the time we get there. There is the articulating bit and the trailer should follow nice and easy. Yes, indeedy. A little bit more, booyah. Go ahead and park her up. Hopefully that didn't count on the damage. Nope, an excellent delivery, $12,306 base. All of our extra qualifications net us 22.6. Another four chunks or so and 718 experience points. So taking a look at the map, we have one city left and it's Longview, a city that we should have seen right when we drove by from Vancouver. And it only looks like there are two companies that even deliver to Longview. If we take a look at the freight market and we sort by destination, and uh, let's flip the destination back the other way and go to the L's. Let's see, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, L, Las Vegas. All right, so it's right over here, long view, long view. That's a lot of LA. There we go. So from Ratton, $88,000. And Bellingham we have to get all the way up there and I don't think we will in two hours and 31 minutes so I don't know if we just want to drive this way and hit up Longview while we sightsee I may see what the uh, third because we got two out of three sightseeing things so if we could find the third sight th sightseeing thing along the way to Longview and just take a drive you and I that would end the episode and the series pretty well, I think. But that will do it for me. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll see you for the next American Truck Sim video. Take care.